Hello and welcome back. So, I went ahead and just scripted this up like I said I was going to. And it's a very simple principle. Actually, I'll just click on him so we can look at it. I've got three sets of basically arrow catchers up here with their leader that if it dies, I really don't care. I happen to have a separate pathless guy with me. So we've got him next in line because um, they have 10 ammunition on them. Honestly, I could probably break these up and change them up a little bit, uh, put the leaders behind the rest of them. I don't think I'm going to need it. It should be a fairly short battle overall. Then I still have, you know, 48 Amazons back here that are going to be marching forward next. Um, hopefully, everything works out. I'm going to have 15 Soul Slays, and you'll see a very, very common thing here. Soul Slay, or Community Master, Soul Slay, Soul Slay, Soul Slay, Soul Slay, followed by three Communion Slaves. Soul Slay, three Communion Slaves. Soul Slay, com three Communion Slaves. Honestly, a 3 to 1 ratio, probably a little higher than what I need for a battle like this. I could easily get away with a 2 to 1. Um, I didn't count how many I have. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Looks like 16 guys cast in Soul Slay. That should be more than enough to take this out. The main thing I'm worried about and the reason I had kind of wish I'd grabbed up... Uh, a damn clam of pearls, is I could have scripted about probably only 10 of those soul slays and then done a Light of the Northern Stars and had the rest of them with some Stellar Cascades uh, set up, uh, maybe to take care of uh, Tanir Narag in case that is what happens, because we are very likely to bump here. They've been trying to take it continually. I'm not going to be surprised at all if I happen to run into them here. However, that's a ton of soul slays overall. It'd be nice if I had some pin boosters, to be honest, on a couple of these guys. I don't. It's much like the Clam of Pearls, you know. I, I probably should have brought one. On the turn where I realized that this is what I was going to do because they were wiping out most of his troops and might be able to take it in the near future, I probably should have jumped over here and basically started... We're still... Okay, yeah, I got the Eye of the Void. So this is going to be a penetration bonus of two, but it's going to be a magic resistance of negative two on my guy. It's also going to have to cut out one of their eyes, meaning they are going to become afflicted. The guys that basically have this, though, are going to be casting the astral spells with the MR negates. That's, you know, 100 precision usually, and 100 range on many of them as well. So I'm just going to be dealing damage with them more often because I'm minusing two from whatever their penetration is. And the other one is going to be Spell Focus. So this has Fool's Luck. Um, uh, I don't remember what Fool's Luck does, actually. I, it says it's good, but afterwards it's bad. I, I'm guessing that it has luck up front, and then when it turns around and uses up the lucky side, you get an unlucky type. Uh, debuff or uh, something like that. But this is the other Astral Booster I was talking about. And this is why I really like combining into these cool, uh, bigger death-focused uh, communions later in the game. Because you can get three penetration bonus just out of these two items right here. That's negative three MR from whatever you're fighting. That's going to bring everything down from the higher end of troops that you'll generally be seeing outside of elite troops. I'm, I'm kind of uh, avoiding the elite troop here. But most of the army troops you're going to see are like 13 MR and below, and being able to knock that down to 10 and then do 9 armor negating damage that's going to sit on the battlefield for 2 turns, it's just a lot of fun. And who doesn't want to drop clouds of death all over the place? Come on, don't lie. Don't lie. I know everybody out there wants to do it. Alright, so there is my blood magic. Very, very good. Um, wow, looks like we barely hit it by, I don't know, 50 or so. I, well, um, before we look through anything else, is there really any reason I want to continue down this path? I mean, the bind, Hella, uh, Hella Fagas would be pretty damn nice. Um, I really haven't done any blood nations for you guys, but what you have is a lot of really quality summons here within the blood magic. Um, of Infernal Circle, no. Um, Ritual of the Five Gates, that's what I'm looking for. Ritual of the Five Gates is really, really good. Now, it's going to be 28 slaves, 
but you're going to get five fiends from uh, five infernal realms. The realm of the demons is not a like straight single realm of the demons. There are various different realms to it, actually. Um, and the demon knights are fantastic. But what you have here that are really great, if you can get them, are the ice devils. I don't remember how many there are offhand, five or six. And these are... Um, this is one of the six icy realms. Okay, so... Six ice devils, so there's six total. And each one of these are a unique item. You're going to get one of the six every time you cast it. Unless somebody else has already picked them up. In which case, if somebody's already cast all six of them, even if you can cast it, it's not going to do you any good. And they're very good. All the unique guys are very good. There's the uh, ice devils there. There's the arch devils here. These are going to cost 99, and there are five arch devils. These also allow you to break into some other magic paths, if you haven't figured that out, if you can get them out. I don't remember which ones overall. Um, I know the Bind Helifagus, or whatever, however you pronounce that, Helofagus, Fagus. Um, one of them is a Blood Death, I do remember that, and these are the, there's four of these guys overall. And, you know, that's not too far I, I can I can access these guys without too much trouble. And of course, then there is just the massive uh incredibly good demon lords. These are these are great. These are fantastic. Um I again don't remember how many there are. I think there's again five or six, four to six, somewhere in that area. Um they're really, really good though. I mean really, really, really good. If nothing else, if you can get the Demon Lords out here, I believe they will break you into the other versions. But you're going to need six, eight Blood Magic to cast them. And I don't really think I have the ability to really take advantage of it. I'd have to Empower. No, I don't think I'd have to Empower for Bind uh, for those. Um, let's go for Construction 6 up next. I can start using my Water Gems. Gems sitting in your back pocket never help you. All right, so let's see how this goes. And it looks like they did try to attack it again. We're just going to turbo through this. Literally, there's only three guys on the battlefield that I can hit with Soul Slay. Um, this is lifeless, but Soul Slay rips out their soul. As long as they're not mindless, at least that's what it said. Oh, there's actually a couple little heroes right here. I didn't notice them. Okay, so there's five guys. These, you will see, have the mindless tag. Um... Obviously, they're not going to be affected by this spell. And my scripting was very lazy. I just kind of put them all back there. And that's it. <laughs> These, uh, when mindless beings no longer have a leader, they start to dissolve and fall apart. Meaning they can't actually act right now without a leader, but they're not really going anywhere. And we can see already that uh, Tanir Narag, and this is what absolutely sucks about communes when they start casting Blink. Uh, the Communion Slave's tiring out pretty good. 135 here. Come on, guys. End it before we start getting towards that 200 mark. Alright, I'm tired of watching. Um, looks like I did lose a Soothsayer. That's going to be one of the commanders, though. So, we're just hoping this is not a big 100-plus army, because I probably need a Clam of Pearls, and to have scripted some guys to work against that. Uh, well, this is not fantastic, but it's not terrible either. There's, they'll probably jump to Stellar Cascades after the first couple turns. And you can just see me wiping out a fair portion of their guys. Obviously, I'm not wiping out enough. I really need to wipe out quite a few more. Okay, so I should basically be out of Soul Slay, so I should be moving over to regular spells in the near future. It's like some of them are already booking it. They want nothing to do with it. They're Stellar Cascades. So not many drop, but you can see they're up to 31 Fatigue already. And you can see they're already passed out. But here is the problem with Stellar Cascades. And this is something I kind of mentioned about it not going well with the Calvary. You can see it punching into my own lines as well. It's 100 Precision, but where the AoE lands is not really up to you. 
Obviously, my guy's not been in combat long enough for 23. That's the only one that's actually been a problem so far. But I can take out really elite units like this. So, go ahead. Come on, guys. Finish it up. I hope I don't burn out a bunch of communion slaves back here. It's kind of part of the reason I went with this uh, very, very heavy communion back here. Let's see. How are, my, how are my slaves looking? Yeah, 150. That's actually not looking good. And they're just going to keep casting as these guys try to leave the field. We're going to watch to see if we start burning any guys out. Okay, we didn't. Thank God. Um, so, you know, good deal overall. Obviously, their army had no chance against that massive stack I had. So, I did lose a few more Amazons than what I would have hoped. Um, well, shit happens. Unexpected event. Uh, taxes neg negative 80%. Oh my god. And negative 10 on the province income. We're supposed to be scaling up, guys. Come on. But there's another treasure. 1,178 gold. And I had about 1,100 gold. This should give me about 2,200. This means my temples and my lab are a go. That's great. Not to mention some gems. I'm really liking the earth gems especially. Uh, yeah, yeah. Obviously you have big armies. I know. And somebody died of a disease. So what throne do we have here? Throne of Knowledge. Of course, it's going to be the one that I really don't care about all that much. I guess I shouldn't be overly surprised. So yeah, I was up to 2,500 gold right there. Pretty damn good. No, 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 no. Um, yeah, no wonder... I'm like, I can't find the option. What's going on here? And it's just because I'm an idiot, though. So, don't be afraid. It's just me being stupid. So, the throne that we were really hoping this was is not the throne that I get, which sucks, because the other one would have been ridiculously good. And it's not to say this throne is not great. Uh, sages are one of the better research uh, vehicles in the game. In fact... If I was playing pretty much any nation except for the nation I'm playing, I would be buying lore masters. It really wouldn't even matter what nation I was actually playing. Basically, this and probably Ulm will be the only nations where I... L.A. Ulm, that is. Not, not E.A. or anything like that. Uh, those will probably be the sole nations I won't bother to uh, buy that on. So, how do I want to do this? Um, how much is this worth? Uh, 47 income, that's that's decent. So we're actually going to start shifting more guys here, because what I'm probably going to do, so I have a nice big stack here, is I'm going to fort and lab this. So let's see, one fort, two labs, that's going to be 1,600 gold. Is the 500 gold here worth it in order to get a hold of some earth magic? Yes, yes it is. I mean, really I'm not doing anything else, so why not? So, let's take you and construct a building. We're going to go with a... Palisades. I'm really going to curse the fact that I did not buy a dam, or bring a dam clam of pearls. I made six of them so that I had plenty in the, in the area... And I still didn't manage to do it. It's, uh, it just really goes to show you how smart of a player I am many times. So just have all of them wait for a turn. We're going to go ahead and probably jump this up a little bit. I mean, I'll probably still burn out all my communion slaves if uh, the battle really goes terribly long. Because those are big armies. He, between these three provinces here, he's got to have, you know, 3,000 soldiers or so. Or no, not 3,000. Probably 500, though, between all those. Right, so that is basically it uh, for the site searching. Minus here and here. And now we have Curse of Blood. And I can actually cast two of them in a row. So we'll be able to see what the uh, vampires look like very shortly. 
Yeah, so I'm not moving this giant mage stack. It's just going to sit over here. That's the whole point of the building up of the forces there. Thankfully, even later in the game like this, the game considers that a bump, which is always good. Um, because that doesn't actually put us at war. If I happen to bump into them fighting another nation, though, that will put us at war, which is something I don't want. I mean, chances are they don't have anything to throw at that anymore. They're probably going to want to go to war with me anyways. Eh, I mean, if they do, they do. Not a lot I can do about it. Um, brum, brum, brum. We're going to actually come up here in site search. Because down here I'm doing this one this turn and then that leaves me literally those two for the nature mage. Oh, I got enough for another skull staff. So once I have my Curse of Blood out, I'm going to run around and begin hopefully finding some death sites. Maybe I'll even find a blood site. Crazier things have happened. Alright, so that looks to be the complete turn. Do I really need 1,400 for research here? Uh, 1,200, 15, yeah, I'm not even going to hit 6 right there. Alright, and just so everybody knows, we're basically coming into the part of the game where the gods are going to start waking up from the imprisoned. So I should have my pretender out here relatively soon. Okay, so there's Curse of Blood, and we will look at that in a second, and... Air Gems 5, good, and, um, okay, so I had another guy die from disease, that's just gonna happen, there's nothing I can do about it, so let's go ahead and take a look at the vampire right here. Now, I know I said these could cast Curse of Blood, obviously I'm an idiot because it takes 4 death, 3 blood, however, if you happen to just be able to make a vampire lord, you can make a skull staff, which means I basically hand this guy a skull staff, which... You can see I have plenty, and boom, he's now a death four, blood three, and can continue to summon them. So you're going to say, oh, the hit points are kind of crappy on these. The protection is absolutely abysmal, which really doesn't matter because we'll get to that in his traits in a minute. The AMR is really good at 16, the morale is ridiculously good at 17. Uh, all these stats really don't matter. The leadership of 80, pretty decent overall, does is able to lead a bunch of undead and demons. Uh, demonic leadership, kind of hard to get for some blood nations, and if you can get vampire lords, they basically take care of that. So this guy can skelly spam. He can do a lot of my blood magic that I may want done. They regenerate 10% a turn because they are vampires. They're slunt, slash, and uh, blunt resistance, so they're going to have those damage types. And then he's invulnerable 25. So the way invulnerable works is it actually goes over your natural protection. Basically, this guy has no natural protection at all, but he does actually have the invulnerable. Now, this is not going to affect non-magic weapons. Magic weapons will basically ignore this, and he will still have a zero protection. And you could throw some armor on him to stack a little bit, but they don't stack very well, because invulnerability is such a high natural protection amount. I take more damage from fire, less damage from cold, less damage from poison. In fact, I'm completely immune to it. I am undead, I don't eat, immortal, very important, flying, very important, stealthy, very important, cannot pass rivers. This is weird because this is uh, some vampire lore that you don't see all that often. The fact that they can't cross uh, running bodies of water, I always just thought that was really interesting they had that. However, my opponent won't be able to see these, I'll be able to move them across my kingdom quite easily, because they're flying, they have a map move of 3, and they're immortal, meaning, again, if they die any province, I have candles, they're not really going to die, they just turn around and pop back up here in my capital, and they automatically clear afflictions. So, 
I'm going to go ahead and head down here. This is going to eat into my income ever so slightly. Oh, come on. You couldn't you couldn't wipe out something other than gross scales first when I got my temples up. You're terrible game. You're bad and you should feel bad. Um Yeah, that's uh they're they're really good. And this is the thing. If you can take any nation and get some blood magic and you have the ability to cast curse of blood already, which we're going to go ahead and cast again. Which is not really all that heavy to get. Four death and three blood. It's not that heavy. Obviously, you want to build that into your pretender if you're really wanting to look at a blood-heavy focus on this nation. Of course, you're going to be playing the game completely different than me. You're going to want to buy Witch Kings every turn for the guaranteed blood hunter. And you should have a lot more sorceresses out here so that you have some very cheap blood hunters. Um... But once you get to here, this is how you uh, bootstrap into blood magic right here. Because once you make a vampire account, it opens up the rest of basically the blood tree. If nothing else, you can use these blood vampires right here to hunt up slaves, to empower a, another vampire, one of them. And that will just eventually let you get everything in the tree in a long enough game, obviously, and if you're just left alone. They're also fantastic on defense because they have, you know, a death level 3 mage to skelly spam, which is fantastic. Um, yeah, I, I want to start building up my forces right there again. Excuse me. Um... Wow, I had four of those guys survive. Did I actually have any more survive? Because I'll give them all to a leader that doesn't suck ass. I just want to scoot this guy back since he is building my fort. That's something when I when I did, uh... Didn't had a lot of problems with. I would forget to stick those guys uh, somewhere safe, and then the opponents would attack it. And obviously it wouldn't destroy my fort because I have guys there protecting it, but I would not actually get any construction done on the fort each turn because, well, I'm a moron. Alright, so this is the basically the, the nation in a nutshell. And this is like literally the optimal uh, kind of gameplay you can hope for right here. So, really, if you've basically seen enough, I can really literally just basically call the let's play here because this is going to be a very long grind all the way through. I'll go ahead and finish it up since I am doing a let's play. The truth is though, at this point, it could turn into a ridiculously long game and my chances of actually losing it at this point are really pretty non-existent. I wanted to see how many mages I had there too and I forgot all about it. I did tell my scout to go ahead and start building on that, didn't I? I didn't tell him to wait, yeah. And that is a throne province, so I'm hoping I get some gems out of it. Hope, hope, hope. I'm definitely not going to hold my breath. If I don't happen to get any, I'm not going to be overly surprised. Whoops, that's not where I want you to go. Why you go up there? Alright, so that's it. I mean... I'm literally going to say it right now. If you just want to basically quit watching the Let's Play... I'm completely fine with it. If you want to just jump to the last few videos, I'm fine with that too, because this is really not an interesting Let's Play. This is as optimal as you can really get with the nation, as far as just spamming forts and just uh, having a ridiculous amount of research, but really, it's not very exciting. It's really not. Um, 
So, I mean, I, I certainly will completely understand if everybody just jumps to the last few videos, because this is going to be fairly boring. Literally, I think my descriptions are going to be like, hmm, nothing happened. Uh, these set of turns, nothing happened. These set of turns, nothing happened. It's just going to be over and over and over again. I am kind of crossing my fingers for my god to pop up, though. Oh, man, I need to take some of that out of construction that turn. Oh, well. You know, um, I could come down here and grab up, um, I need some empowers, obviously. Where is golem construction? Right here. I would need some empowers for this. Golems are a lot of fun, and they're really good as Cs. Should I just come down here and grab it, just for the hell of it? No, I guess not. Should I go ahead and go to Construction 8, something I really don't do because most of the items are worthless? Um... I think I'm going to go ahead and really push for uh, Enchantment 8. That's going to get me an Enchantment 7, Thetis Blessing, and then Mass Regeneration. So those will probably be pretty solid options. Uh, so there's my Curse of Blood. That frees him up completely now. And here you're seeing my Soothsayers begin to stop some of these negative events. Plus 20 income. That's alright. Uh, Iron Caverns. Where's that at? Oh. Okay, so something's attacking them. This is... Uh... This is actually something I'm finding to be ridiculously weird. It looks like the AI is not buying 50 province defense anymore. I wonder what the hell it's spending all its money on then. Because that's unusual. At least into the old way the game used to play. I don't know, I've been gone for a while. Maybe it's changed. Alright, so first up we are going to site search. Then I'm gonna... Yeah, I might as well build a temple. And no other gems yet. Um... Okay. This is a boring game. Da, da. If you can't tell, I really just almost wanted to just quit because this is really not a lot of fun. Maybe something will happen in the near future when I learn all of the research in the game and then just decide to uh, wipe out all of the AIs, the heathens, the unbelievers. I will destroy them all. Alright, so we can go, go ahead and look for some more death gems, obviously. We are going to make sure he's set to retreat. Good. Alright, so I'm actually not going to be uh, patrolling these out. I'm not worried about an optimal slave income. This, this just kind of happens to be that, well, I'm not being attacked. I have a big bunch of blood slaves, so and I got the correct hero. So I'm just going to go this direction just because. Um, obviously, if you're going for optimal blood slaves, you're going to want provinces that are over 5,000 population and as close to uh, 5,000 as humanly possible. Like, take this. This has 23,000. Yes, I can blood hunt it. Blood hunting pisses people off and increases your unrest. There's no reason I want to piss the people off that are paying up uh, a sixth, almost a seventh of... Uh, my entire income. This province I will never blood hunt. Do not blood hunt the farmlands. That is always going to end up being a bad deal for you. Um, so what you're going to look for is anything that is over 5,000. If you have to go under 5,000, it's not, you know, end of the world type stuff. Um, 
you definitely probably don't want to go below that. And if you're going for an optimal amount, what you're probably going to want to do is... Oh, I've got an abandoned lab here. I forgot about that. I'm like, what are all these guys doing here? What is going on? Um, if you're really wanting to go for an optimal blood hunting, you're not going to rotate them, which is what I'm going to do. I'll blood hunt here until the unrest gets up pretty damn high. And then I'm just going to move over here and let the unrest clear naturally. Um, that is not the way to optimally do it. If you're really just wanting to get as many slaves as possible, you're going to stick a indie commander, let's say this guy right here. I'm going to get a bunch of chaff troops, and each turn I'm going to tell him to patrol this, and it's going to kill off part of the population. If you are going for blood, not just with this nation, but with any nation, you should really think about the order three skills. The unrest reduction of three may not seem like a lot, but it adds up and means you're not killing as many of your people each turn. And on top of that, you're probably going to want to think about growth three as well, because if you're actually aiming to have a good, strong blood economy, you're really going to need to patrol. If I was patrolling, I'd never buy troops for it, uh, especially since I have nature in the nation. I'd make a bunch of pack of wolves and have them patrol it out. That's actually not really what I'm doing, though, of course, so... Oh, these can summon allies. I forgot about that. Um, I guess I could have mentioned that. I completely forgot. I think they're a bunch of little uh, chaff peasant farmer type guys. Um, I'm not going to summon them because I, I remember them being crap. I, well, we can do it for one turn just so I can show you. Maybe they don't have upkeep. They probably have upkeep. I don't know why I keep moving these guys down here. I really want to start building up this fort right here again. In case they want to go to war, I've just got guys, you know, ready to rock and roll. The thing is, I've got a ton of death mages here. So, really don't have to worry about it in all honesty. No magic sites all around. Very good. Uh, five nature gems, good, good, and a local slave lord. That's eight blood slaves and 220 gold. That is always good. Um, it's really weird. I thought that was locked under the uh, turmoil scales with luck. Huh, apparently not. I'm really just thinking about coming down here and just whooping on Ulm just because. How far away am I going to be from enchantment eight? Not that far. I mean, Master Generation's pretty damn good. It's going to eat through my Nature Gems, but this this nation chews through Nature Gems anyways in the late game and really doesn't have the world's greatest income on them. Alright, so let's look at our ally. Okay, it's actually the regular vampires. Don't cost upkeep, don't cost upkeep. Zero gold a year, so, um, that's good. I couldn't remember if they costed upkeep. I thought they got a bunch of little uh, peasants to follow the vampire lords. Apparently not, because here's a vampire right here. So basically, you're looking at the lesser version, a lower uh, blood version. And I mean that kind of in an ironic way, uh, the bloodlines... Never mind, it's all about Vampire the Masquerade. I'm sure nobody would get any of the references I was talking about. But he still has all of the cool stuff that the regular vampire does. And he has the life drain attack, so... You know, if you get enough of them up, they're a decent unit overall, I guess. No, we don't want you doing that. We want you... Blood hunting...
All right, so we're basically done with our nature magic. Boy, now that I have nowhere to sacrifice these guys to, I'm sure I'm getting a lot of them. Whatever, just hang out. I don't feel like moving you around anymore. Same thing for you. Um, no, not that direction. Alright, so, uh... So far, no sights here. Go ahead and get our temple up. Alright, we'll just check the beginning of the next turn. I'll probably uh, script this turn and then end it and script the next turn and just bring you guys in like normal. Alright, so we're at 7 and literally 2 turns for enchantment 8. Uh, I got 11 blood slaves. Good. Oh, oh, hidden laboratory. That's good. Uh, dancing tried it. Decent. Uh, no earth gems. Kind of sad. I never did make any of those earth mages, did I? Um, let's change that immediately. Wow, I did not put in a... Didn't put in a lab here. Did I accidentally put it in a lab somewhere else? Um, possibly. So where did we get another lab? That sucks because I really don't want to blood hunt that province overall. That is a pretty decent amount of gold coming out of it. So you can see my unrest is already up to 12. Unrest will mean that you guys have a harder time blood hunting basically because the people don't like it when you steal all of their virgin women and children. Well, I guess the virgins are all women. I, I've always just kind of assumed they're children. Uh, where in the hell are you going to find virgins all over the place? Maybe that's a bit of a mistake on my part, but it does seem to ring kind of true to my ears. Seems like in ye old, ye old yonder times, you know, the women were married off at like 12, 13, 14... That, to me, says that, you know, uh, these women are probably not just virgin women, but they are probably very, very young women. And I basically have the military power at this point to flood the world with death if I wanted to, or really flood the world with anything that I really wanted to. It doesn't matter. Right, I happen to have another scout ready to go. Um, I don't know, go that way. And I got the temple here when I claim the throne this turn, and that should give me a bunch of extra checks. I'll just have her research, why not? Go ahead and get the Throne of Ascension. And here's the how you perform blood sacrifices. And obviously you have to put slaves into their inventory, their personal magic gems here, for them to do it. And the way blood sacrifice works, because again, I haven't done it with a, another blood nation for you guys, is you can sacrifice a number of slaves equal to your priest level. So this guy being a priest level 3 can sacrifice three uh, blood slaves a turn, and each blood slave will uh, automatically do a dominion check, just like a temple will. The thing is, two blood sacrifice, you must have a temple in the province, and you can only sac blood sacrifice with uh, one unit per temple, which means I, I could honestly come to right here if I wanted to just basically sit here forever and do nothing, which actually... 
Do I want to go ahead and just go for a Dom kill on this really long game anyways? No, no I don't. But I would uh, recruit up a bunch of priests right here. I've got 11 temples overall. Of course I could have some of my warrior sorceresses handle this in various places. And then I would basically have some guys run blood slaves out to all these people at the temples every so often to refill the priests there. And I would create an extra temple check for every single temple I have on the board. Obviously this one would actually give me four temple checks all in all because I have my profit here. So let's go ahead and grab the Throne of Ascension. Oh wow, so basically my water hand is kind of useless. Wow, I said I was going to do that differently, and this video timeline is probably getting out of control. So we'll end one more turn and just see what happens. So we found a magic site, enchanted tomb, a single death gem, pretty decent. And that's going to be on the throne, so thankfully I found something there. And I got two blood hunters got me 21 good blood slaves. wonder if I should go ahead and make them some uh, sanguine dousing rods. Uh, another hidden laboratory with a bunch of gems and a blood thorn. Blood thorn is not going to be terribly useful. Uh, a few more gems right there, and more nature gems. So, this is not going to be a terribly interesting turn. So, we're just going to go ahead and end it right here. And thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you next time.